Hello everyone! Welcome on board to Live and Eat Colorful. I'd like to welcome all the members and all the participants and everyone who's on board now and who will be coming to Live and Eat Colorful. That's exactly what it is tonight. Cynthia Hu, she's the organizer, the owner and the hostess. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolute pleasure from my side. Um, and greatly, greatly appreciated, um, Cynthia. And I'm going to ask my cameraman, who's my son, by the way, um, how many are on board, so more or less? Cynthia is online. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> that's lovely. Okay, that's not a problem. We'll wait a little while, Cynthia, if you're okay with that, um, so that the others can jump on board. And if there's no one else, it'll be you and I. How about that? Okay, no problem. And you can always have it run again and they can um, join in later on if, if that, that's the case. Um, live and eat colorful. Cynthia, what a great idea. In fact, um, I didn't have to think about it too, too long because most of my dishes that I present live are colorful. And the one that I'm going to be presenting tonight is very colorful. And that's what we're looking forward to. Um, and again, my cameraman, more than one? Three. Three. All right. I'm going to start. Cynthia, are you okay with that? Yeah. Hands up. <laughs> There's no reaction. Okay. No problem. Cynthia, I'm going to start. Okay. Once again, welcome everyone on board. I know we're going to have a large crowd tonight. I love large crowds. That's absolutely lovely. Um, and uh, for those of you who do not know me, and I think most of you don't, except for Cynthia, the hostess, I'm going to repeat what I said before. Once again, Cynthia... Thank you so much for inviting me to your uh, program. Um, for me, it's a pleasure. I love cooking. It's part of my it's part of my job, actually. It's been part of my job for a little while, and um, you found me, and that's just fantastic. Okay, now for those of you who do not know me, my name is Alexandra von Hahn. It sounds very German, doesn't it? It is German. My father is German Baltic from Latvia. It's a minority group of Germans, and my mother she's Hungarian. They both were teenagers when they left the war, met each other in Chile, got married, and had me, plus three other children. So we were raised in Chile, in Santiago, so we went to a dual school, German, Spanish, and French. And now we're here in Germany. In other words, I'm in Germany, because I married a German. And we traveled a lot, our postings were abroad. And I've been abroad for a long, long time, predominantly the Middle East, also Asia, by Asia I mean Iran. Today is Iran. We're going to celebrate a beautiful and probably not the most popular, but the most expensive. And it was the most popular dish during the time uh, of the royal family, of the Shah. It is popular today, but due to the lack of some of the products available there, they have substituted some of the products, but in any effect, they're still consuming it today, which is just beautiful. It's vegetarian. It can be vegetarian or meat can be added. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a short little walk through how colorful the meal will be today. Okay, we're going to start with a little bit of the jewelry. The jewelry actually comes from part, and one from Syria, um, the other one from Iran, actually from, uh, from the area, um, from the border, bordering Turkey. Now, you will see that Iran is predominantly focusing virtually every dish, nuts, almonds, and different types. We, um, we have them slivered into long um, pieces. Here we have them sliced in the back, and their skin has been removed. This is what they absolutely love, the Iranians. And also peeled whole almonds, and then we're going to come up to the front. Um, we're not going to be using, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. We have cardamom, which is what they use as well. A little less, and they use a whole lot of roses. Roses in, in every format that you can possibly imagine. Um, it's actually marinated, cooked, steamed, and also the extract, which means rose uh, uh, water. And here we have pistachios. Pistachios is what, for the United States, is um, peanuts. Uh, Iran is pistachio. These are Iranian pistachios, again, and these are, <laughs> you're going to laugh, these are from, uh, from the United States that we bought, or that I bought here in Germany. 
This is how they come. I peel them. I don't buy the slivered ones because they are actually without any flavor. So if I buy the pistachio whole and I break them apart, they actually taste substantially better and the flavor is there. And this is what we're going for. We're going for the authentic flavor as much as possible. And we're now going to go just further down here a little bit. We have the barberries. I'm going to explain to you a little more a little later on. We have the orange peel, and I have prepared for you also the uh, toppings, which I'm going to explain to you in a short while. And now I'm going to do the following. This is going to be a rice dish. A rice dish, it's usually served oval platter. Oval, this is um, in comparison to, for example, round dishes, which is served in the Gulf area, where they sit on the floor around the uh, platters or the uh, tablecloth. In Iran, it's as much as possible oval, which again is a sign of beauty for the Iranians or Persians. In fact, before they became Iranian, they were Persians, and they were using the oval platters already. Now, rice dishes are probably the component number one in their diet. And I will show you what sort of rice they use and how they cook it. However, I will not be able to show you the entire procedure because it will take longer than an hour but I give one-to-one -one courses and then I can give it to you in full length and you'll be able to do it on your own. Okay, I'm going to show you now the type of rice that we're using, which is the basmati rice. In Iran, they do not use, they have their own rice. It looks relatively close to the basmati rice, but in Iran, it's just a little bit thicker or a little bit fatter. And, it, and the flavor is similar to basmati, but not the same. It's from the, uh, from the area where they have a lot of water, although their water is diminishing, so they're importing now the rice predominantly from Pakistan. However, this the rice here is called Tilda, T-I-L-D-A, from India, one of the best qualities going, where you know for sure that the basmati rice will work out. Now, what I have done, I've taken two cups of rice, and I have soaked them in water, for about two hours. You don't have to soak them for two hours, but you can. It's um, easier and quicker cooking this way. And what you do is before you soak them for the half hour or two hours, you rinse them until the water is clear. Now, the way the Iranians um, cook their rice is actually very simple, um, but at the same time, you, know, you have to know what you're doing. So we have about two liters of boiling water two cups of pre-soaked rice, which I'm going to now put into the, uh, into the pot. It's going to get very hot in a second. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to show you the rice. Now we have the high fire, the highest, which means for you it's 100%. We have the percentage system here. Okay, now it's going to boil, and we're not going to boil it for the full length of time. I'm going to show you until the rice is al dente. So while this is cooking, it's about, it's about three, four minutes because the water has been boiling already. Um, what I did forget, but I'm going to have to add this one in. I have two heaping teaspoon of Himalaya salt. It has to taste slightly or very close to how the ocean water tastes like. And why? Rice is um, without taste or very little taste. Although basmati has its own accent, but it always needs the salt. If you add the salt later, the rice will not absorb the salt. So what I've done now, and just to prove it to you, I'm just going to cool it just ever so slightly the water, and I'm going to taste it. Mm, it's definitely ocean water, but not very strong ocean water, but Strong enough so I can say, oh wow, yes, it is salty, but it's a nice saltiness. Not mild, it's actually medium strong, which is exactly how it should be. Okay, so it's starting to boil, and the rice is, because it was pre-soaked, uh, in my case here two hours before, it's already growing in size. It's expanding, which is beautiful, beautiful, and in a couple of minutes, it will be al dente. Now, while it's cooking the next one or two minutes, I'm going to show you what I have done once the rice has been cooked. Um, the Iranians, they like to decorate their food. In other words, there is a, um, there's a reason why it's decorated. 
It is to honor oneself, which means the person who's creating it is actually creating it for herself or for himself, simultaneously for the guest or for the family. So there is that, um, that it's oscillating back and forth. I'm doing it for myself and I'm doing it for the others. And it's a beautiful balance. Their entire food system, their entire diet, all their menus, all their recipes are based on balance, cold, warm, cold, warm, not the temperature when you touch necessarily. It's they have a different classification, which I will get into not today, but also next time. So what it is, it's a, it's a transformational, it's transformational cooking. Very strange for me to say this, or for you to hear, not for me to say, but for you to hear perhaps. But the Iranians and Persians have always cooked with one focus. You're grounded to the ground. And why do they cook bare feet? There's a very good reason for it. You're actually connected to the ground. Absolutely. I have rubber gloves on, but they, they touch everything. They must touch the food. So there's a direct connection with the ground, grounding. All the energies are in the ground and they come up and you're also connected to their Allah or to the divine or to the universe and it comes through again through your hands and you're touching the food and you're transmitting the energy of joy that you're having when you're cooking and I can tell you right now if you're cooking um, without the joy and without fun the food or the dish will not result um, the way perhaps you wanted to you may not get all the compliments that you love to hear when you've done when you've created a beautiful dish so this is very very important that you feel grounded and you want to cook it's a joy and that's the transformation part what happens when you're grounded absolutely grounded you're at peace this is the moment that you're in a day when you are at peace okay now i may have to stop for a moment and just show you i'm going to show you on this it has expanded and if you were to take it in your hands, this is, this is the ultimate test, how Iranians test the rice. They break it, and it must be soft from the outside and crispy inside, al dente. This is actually not quite there yet, but almost, almost. We'll just give it another minute. So I have explained to you, um, Again, it's the joy that you transmit through the food, and once you're serving it, you still have that joy, and everyone feels it, either consciously or not, but they love the food. Um, this is what it is. And then the toppings. As I said before, we have the nuts, we have the berries, the bar berries. We also have slivered, or um, actually it's a zest, but in strings of an orange. And in order, and in um, the orange has been cooked, it's like a marmalade, but it's not, in saffron. And saffron looks like this. For those of you who would like to know what saffron is, the, um, it's the, are the strings, very easily said, from a croci or crocus uh, flower grown in Iran. And look, you can identify it as a thicker end and a thinner end. Again, I'm just going to go over here. Again, here's a thicker end and a thinner end and you can see there's a uniform color it's not mixed with light orange dark orange or even yellow if that is the case then you have to ask yourself to is it from iran probably not perhaps most often than not yes um, if it comes from spain then you have to know the vendor is he or she selling you spanish zafran that color yes you want a darker one originally the uh, saffron in Spain comes from Iran the um, the, the original flowers um, and they they have a huge huge crop every every year it's become it's actually the most expensive spice in the world I have not compared it to the price of gold but it's pretty close to it okay now here we go I'm going to show you the rice here we go we actually reached the point it's actually long and thin, and that's because I pre-soaked it. Here, look at this. Now I'm going to squish it, and it's a soft break. Slightly crispy inside, but soft outside. Perfect cooking. So this is when I stop. And I'm going to um, use the colander. I'm going to ask my cameraman to follow. You will see this. And I'm going to st um, strain it. 
it. It's the same strainer that also Iranians use in Iran. Or also where I lived. Um, I lived in the Emirates. I lived in Yemen. And many other countries. And I was in Iran for three years. And I gave birth to my daughter there. I'm so happy about that. And her name is Tamara. And Tamra or Tamara in Farsi means date palm tree or palm date tree. Okay, now I'm going to show it to you in this um, um, here where it's strained and you'll be able to see it. Oh, I put oh, some berries dropped in. That's all right. Okay, I'll show it to you here on my hand. And I hope you're able to see it. They're long and thin and they're breaking easily. There you are. See, you see them jump already. So I'm not going to break them all because the art of presenting the food in Iran is to have the rice intact. Okay, now you're going to ask yourself what happens now. Once this is al dente, you bring it back into a pot with a lot of butter at the bottom and then put on low fire, close, close the lid and, and cover it with a cloth and it's there for another hour or so on very low fire. It's a question of patience. Or is a fast way, I don't recommend it, but it can be done, is that you cook it until it's soft. So it doesn't take very long. It may take maybe 10 minutes and then it's cooked. And there you go. See that all the kernels are separate. When they're separate, this is the perfect how the rice should be. And it's not sticking to the other kernel. It's all separate. So there we are. I'm going to leave, 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 leave this here and I'm going to show you. I've been keeping the other rice, the one that I prepared for you, and having um, had it on the heat for over, hmm, I think about two hours. And there are several ways of decorating or actually shaping the rice on your dish. As I said before, the dish has to be oval. This is a small dish. You can actually arrange it there. I'm going to show you. And this is still warm or partially warm. And that's the reason why I'm actually wearing um, uh, rubber gloves because I'm going to shape it with my hands. The, um, the Iranian women, they usually use a paddle to shape it or they use their own hands. And that's um, just for those of you who wonder why women or men in, uh, in the Middle East, in the Gulf area, use their hands. They maintain that God energy comes through the food into your hands and from your balanced, from your grounded um, energy, that because you're barefooted, um, goes through the food. So there is that, um, that balance between food and the one who creates the, uh, the dishes. All right, as you can see, I'm shaping it oval two and slightly heaping upwards. So here you have the choice of leaving it like this. And what comes um, is that what we do, I'm not sure the war, if the rice is warm enough, but I think we're, we're going to try it. It doesn't really matter. Just a couple of dollops of butter or ghee, by the way, for those of you who are, or yes, ghee, who are vegetarian, um, would prefer to use the clarified butter. And for those of you who are vegan, you might want to use your uh, vegan clarified butter or vegan butter, or you can use oil. It does not matter. The Iranians, they have a perfect balance between how much fat they use and how much carb, which means the carbohydrate is actually, the, the, the flavor coming from the carbohydrate is exuded or carried um, through the butter, through the fat, just like any other dish. The only thing is they talk about it a lot. Okay, so I'm just putting the butter, in this case, the ghee, on it. Now, if it were just a little warmer, it would melt right into it, and it's left like this. This is one way of doing it, and then the idea of decorating it. What I am going to do, I'm going to transfer this. In other words, it's always, sorry about that, it's decorated with the nuts, with the berries, with the orange peel, with the pomegranate pearls, and then green all around it. I'm going to give you a larger um, um, yeah. dish. Here we go. And this is if you wish to have um, guests whom you would like to honor. You would like to honor yourself, maybe. That could also be. So I'm going to transfer this to the larger. It's round, and if you have oval, uh, then try to use oval. And if you don't have oval, you use a round dish. 
as long as it's beautifully, beautifully decorated. Okay, now I'm going to transfer the rest of the rice. There we go. And I'm going to be separating it with my hands. And you're going to see this in a second. Because I've been heating it now up for over, yeah, about two hours. So this is one again touching the food is so wonderful and if you've asked yourself why in india or indians around the world they prefer to eat it with um, the food with their hands it's the same reason they have to have the connection um, of the energy of the food they are, um, and they massage the food and then it goes into the into the uh, into the mouth so here we go i'm going to separate them as much as possible there we go okay now I'm going to um, mount this. It's so lovely, by the way, when I lived in Iran, um, we've had this dish done by many of our, of our Iranian friends. And I learned how to make this dish from one of the male um, friends whom I, whom I visited in my, in my neighborhood. Um, and he said, oh, never to forget, the name of this dish is Shirin Polu. Shirin in Farsi, or in Iranian or in Persian is called, uh, is, is, is actually, um, it means sweet and polo means rice. So it's a sweet rice. You will also find it under the name of jeweled rice. Okay, now you can either leave it round or you can, on a round dish, you can also shape it oval if you so wish. Now I'm going to flatten it just ever so slightly because I'm going to need room. And now you're going to ask yourself, how am I going to decorate it? I'm going to use these two spatulas and separate, which means every, um, every segment will be decorated. Now, I'm going to show you here. This is the center, more or less, more or less. There we go. And the center gets the most beautiful part of the decoration there we go and it is orange with a little bit of um, sugar and I will show you what type of sugar we used um, there we go these are orange peel with a lot of saffron I used for this amount this is for four people one full teaspoon of saffron which is a lot, by the way. It is a lot and it is expensive. Yes, I fully, fully agree. And the flavor of these orange peels cooked in sugar and saffron is very, very unique. If you've ever smelled saffron, it's slightly acidic, slightly nutty, very elegant, and, um, and very honoring. It's, it's a very, very honoring of fragrance. Now, I'm going to also just cover this area here with saffron because the rice will pick up the flavor of the orange and the sweetness and that of the saffron and here as well and the rest of the um, orange peel comes here to the top which will be mixed when upon serving it's not really mixed but um, when you serve yourself you'll be taking part of this part of this segment part of the other segment here and the last drops with saffron. Okay, so we have now done this segment here. I'm going to cut in here and, and go ahead and do the other segment. Now with orange, what goes well with orange? And this is very important, not red. It can, but not necessarily. We're going to be using, um, we're going to be using here, the slivered or sliced rather, roasted almonds, which I roasted in butter. Again, the butter or the fat, and it's so exquisite when you mix it with rice. Exquisite. It's, you can also dry roast. If you don't want any butter, you can dry roast it. But I have to tell you something. When you add the butter, it's so flavorful. So flavorful. Now, you can use either the regular butter or um, clarified butter or your vegan butter. Yeah, that's your choice. Um, the important thing here is that you're using the fat, which is, um, again, it carries the flavor and it's so exquisite. There we go. And if you, and the thicker, the better. The more almonds, the more nuts, it's so exquisite. There we go. And we are done. 
Okay, now I'm going to lift this spatula and go to the next segment. And we're going to choose, what are we going to choose? We're going to be choosing to use um, barberries. Now, the barberries have been also slightly uh, fried slightly in butter as well. Now, with barberries, what are barberries? Um, if you want to compare, it's actually a berry that grows on a shrub and it grows wild and it's also cultivated. Here in Germany, where I live, they often grow along the train tracks. I would love to harvest them from there. I can't because they spray them um, with pesticide, insecticide, and I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that risk, but that's where they grow. I don't know why, but that's where they grow. They're just you know shrubs. They're about three feet, two feet in height, sometimes a little higher. Um, and you were to pick them in the same way as if you were going to pick wild uh, blueberries in the, in the United States or um, wild raspberries or wild strawberries. These barberries are... I cannot compare it, but it's the closest thing that I can compare it with, with the Canadian or American cranberry. So if you do not find bar barberries, you can take them the, the cranberry. Try to find the cranberries, which have not been mixed with, um, with fat or oil and sugar. If you can get them raw, meaning frozen, if need be, and you can um, actually just quickly fry them in a little bit of butter, cut them in small pieces, and you have not the equivalent, but very similar. If you want barberries, very often Turkish stores, Iranian stores, Arabic stores, or I buy organic from Amazon. And then I'm sure, sure that they are fresh and they're not light in color. So when you're buying them, make sure that you that they are dark in color as soon as you see them not being dark as in dark ruby they're they were exposed to light they're not supposed to be exposed to light and then the flavor is no longer there it dissipates as soon as the light is exposed um is it, or as soon as the barberries are exposed to light let's see so we're going to now decorate this particular segment it's exquisite and barberries have to be fried slightly in butter. Now, if you don't want to use butter, you can dry fry them, but be careful. As soon as they inflate, pull the, um, the pan away from the heat, otherwise they burn. It's usually done within under one minute. They burn very, very quickly. Now, we all have that experience once we've made the shirin polo. This is the shirin polo. That inadvertently, when we're in a hurry, which we shouldn't be, we tend to burn the barberry. Now, we have, we have a little more barberry. We're going, to, we're going to cover the rice. And we're going to cover the rice. Why? Because we're going to show it to our guests that we have, that we are in abundance. It doesn't mean that you're rich. Abundance simply means um, that you understand and you've understood the, the, universal, the universal law of showing what you have, honoring yourself with what you have. Um, does it mean that you're rich? It could be. Does it mean that you're always rich? No. It just means you have it and you're showing it and you're enjoying it. This is the main part. And you're playing with colors. The guest will understand, especially in Iran, of course, and those who enjoy food and, and enjoy the color combination and the food and the flavor combination, is that you've taken the effort to understand and to transmit your focus on to the dish. Beautiful. It's like painting a beautiful canvas. The same thing. You, you can take longer. You can also design it in your own way. You go into curves. You can do whatever you wish. You can go one way and then the other way. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is, is the execution and the creation in the end. Very often, while we are cooking and while we are decorating, we have um, an intuition or we have feelings or we, have, we become emotional. This is because we are grounded and the thoughts are coming across. So it's called transformational cooking, which is what I do. Okay, what color? Shall we go back to the almonds? Any of you have any questions? Um, let's go here. We're going to go, I've also fried these um, peeled almonds in butter, actually in, in ghee. And I'm going to try to have them not rolling down the platter. So I hope you all agree, this is okay. Okay, so if any of you have questions, please go ahead. And if you're wondering why I lived in Iran, why did I live in Yemen? 
Well, there is not a big secret. Um, my husband was a German diplomat and we were very lucky. We covered um, areas of high risk, middle to high risk, and I loved it. I really do. I, so politically, I wasn't involved at all. I was dealing with food all the time. <laughs> It was fun. It was really a lot of fun. And when it comes to um, playing with food, working with food, talking and interviewing, and as I have also written a cookbook, um, it's not necessarily the end result. It was um, all the work and all the, um, the enjoyment that I had uh, while I was interviewing um, my, my interviewees. Okay, so we've done more or less half. And now we're going to go to the other side. And let's not forget the national nuts. Do you, do you, do you recall which is the national nut, nuts of, um, of Iran? Any of you? Before I... Any of you? No? Should I tell you the answer? Or should I just wait a little bit? Okay, what I'm going to do is the pistachio. So the pistachios, I have left them raw. Under normal condition, you can actually crush them. And look what I'm going to do. If you can buy um, pistachios with the husk or with the shell and de-shell them yourself, which is the best thing to do, and then use the mortar and pestle and crush them yourself. Um, this is when you have the uh, freshest flavor on the spot. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to remove the roses. I have, um, I have roses here as well, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, let's crush them. I'm going to crush them, not too, too much, uh, but somewhat. And you can leave the rest whole, and that's fine too. So, now I'm going to use the, um, the spatula again, and we're going to use the second thing. We're going to just give it an indication as to where I'm going to be decorating it. And look, see, this is how it it also has, I've had, I added one rose and I crushed the petals. Look at this. This is a Moroccan rose. The Moroccan roses are very flavorful, very intensive in the, um, as far as the flavor of the rose is concerned. It smells very much like rose water. It tastes like rose water. And it's the beautiful combination with pistachio. The pistachio, the flavor of the pistachio actually comes to the surface, surface in combination with one or two roses. So here we go. And I'm going to add a little more. Here we go. So you can always add a little more, which is what I'm going to do now. And some of the whole, some whole. This is again, just to show the abundancy. Beautiful, and the fragrance. I wish, I wish, really, I wish that you were here. Look at this. This is not a Moroccan rose. This is an Indian rose. They're larger, they're lighter, and their fragrance is less uh, potent. I'm going to open, and you will see the color. It's semi-red, semi-yellow, which is very typical for the Indian roses, which is also okay. Here, I'm going to decorate this segment here with with um, with the Indian rose as well. Inside, I, ha I have the Moroccan rose, which I prefer. There we go. And one, no, two more. Okay, two more. I think we'll make it, right? I hope so. We're going to add, oh yes. Yes, um, we're going to, thank you. We're going to add the um, pomegranate pearls. Beautiful. And if you wish, doing it yourself, um, you may want to have an eyebrow brow plucker with you just in case they roll around because with the finger it's not so easy. So here we're going to cover it. And in future, if, if you're actually going to be making this shirin polo, you can actually place the pearls more towards the center if you wish. But it's more or less a balance. You have red, white, orange, green, red. And white at the end. And here I will have raisins. The last segment. So the pomegranate again is one of their most one of their popular uh, fruits in Iran, which they absolutely have on everything with meat, with rice, desserts, their ice cream decoration um, as a snack. And um, 
I can show you next time how it, how they peel it. It's, just, it's very quick, actually, and uh, very impressive. Okay, so we've covered that. And one more segment. We're going to use raisins. These raisins were also quickly fried in ghee or in butter or um, vegan butter, as you wish. And if you're not into the butter at all, of course, oil will work as well. And here we go. It's so flavorful. It's covered with butter. So here we go. And we're going to have a little bit of the brown color, which is the color of the earth, their mountains. One should never forget. There's a lot of brown colors. So if you're traveling to Iran in the future, which I hope you will, one of the very last countries left with their authentic dishes, with their authentic um, architecture and their um, lifestyle. And let's hope that we, can, um, um, that we will be able to travel to Iran soon. Um, strictly the food, the dishes are simply exquisite. And you're going to be surprised that if you have the chance to travel to Iran, try to organize in such a way that it is a culinary um, trip, which makes life so much easier. The Iranians love to talk and they talk as soon as they know you're interested in culinary, you're well taken care of. They don't necessarily like to sit around tables and chairs, although they have that. You're going to wonder. Most Iranians prefer to sit cross-legged on a bed. And it looks like a bed. It's got a flat. Um, it's, it's an area where the mattress should be. And with the head part and the foot part, and you lean your back against the head or against the foot part, you cross leg or you're sitting in a lotus position and you eat your dinner slowly with, and I'll show you, not with your hands necessarily, although it's done there too, but not readily. Okay, so let's go back to the final part here. Is I'm going to just cross over here. And, and you've noticed that I had green herbs. There's a very good reason. As you can see, there is no protein as far as the meat is concerned. We have protein here in the nuts, in the pistachio, almond, slivered, um, and the, the um, protein also in the peeled almond. But this is not a complete protein, incomplete. The protein, the completed, it's not, um, it's not 100% complete, but it's close to it, is to eat a lot of green. So what they do, they have a spoonful of this dish, the shading bolo, and they will take one of the greens and eat it together. And this is again to provoke and to promote the digestion, uh, to avoid bloating, uh, uh, bloating, sorry. And there's a lot of green. And you can see there's also chives, lots of chives are eaten, lots. They don't smell of onion. Um, but they eat it and they eat it together with the carbs. Absolutely exquisite. So you can decorate it as well. If you want, you can actually decorate it across if you wish, like this, or are on the side, as I'm going to do it now here. It's very, very simple. Very simple, very beautiful. And if you have more guests, you can also use very large platters, which is what I did while I was living in Iran, when we had our official functions. You would then buy yourself these large platters, and I mean about this size here, where you have anywhere between 10 to 15 kilos, yeah, 10, 10 to 15 kilos of rice, and decorate it the same way. Beautiful, just beautiful. And that would be your centerpiece with meat or without meat. This is to give the option to the guests, whether they're vegetarians, vegans, um, or meat eaters. So this is going to be, this is the final part to our shirin polo dish. And I'm going to um, show you just before we end, I'm going to ask my cameraman, uh, how many minutes are we at 45? No, seven more minutes. Seven more minutes. All right. So, <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do, if you absolutely want to decorate a little more, then we can put a little more of the, um, um, pomegranate. The more pomegranate, the better. Iranians love the pomegranates. The more, the better. The more, the merrier. If we can decorate it. And even around here. It's, it, it gives that, um, like I said before, it's also called the jewel uh, rice dish. Okay, so we're here. All around it. There we go. Um, not only is this healthy, um, Iranians don't necessarily say it's healthy. What they say, this is mother nature and God working together. 
nothing chemical absolutely nothing chemical if you can try to, if you can try to um, get all all your food organic as much as possible the herbs that you see here are from the garden i planted them from organic seeds or organic plants that were sold at the organic market try to be conscious of the fact that what you're feeding you have wavelength or you have energies in every food the more organic the closer it is to what your body wants and needs and when it's not organic or heavily um, with or infested with, with uh, chemicals, the body does not understand it and will never understand it. So just keep that in mind. We ask ourselves why we're not doing that well health wise. None of us virtually, even for those of us who try very hard. Um, but we're becoming more aware, more expansive and more conscious of the fact that eating healthy food. By healthy, I don't mean power food. Everything is a power food if it's organic and clean. Um, so with this thought in mind, I have, I think, two more minutes. You asked probably yourselves, how did I get these orange peel or the orange zest? And some technical a glitch here, but I think we're back again. I'm going to show you how to get the orange zest. You can buy yourself this particular orange zester or orange peeler uh, with this is a tool with these round little circles, usually five or six, not more. And organic orange, you pre-scrub them and wash them in water, in uh, one liter of water and a half a tablespoon of um, sodium bicarbonate or any other method that you know of. Here, I'm going to show you. So this is how it works. So you have your peel here or your zest. They're soaked overnight and you change the water as often as you can. The following day, then you cook them, and I can show you that in my next video, um, either one-to-one -one or in one of the open um, free of charge uh, videos. I'm going to show you also the book in case you're interested. I live in the UAE. Most of you know Dubai. I, I lived in the capital, in Abu Dhabi. And in Abu Dhabi, um, the, the, uh, the um, well, Abu Dhabi is in the Emirates. We have seven, seven Emirates and all my research and all my fun um, living also with Emiratis um, turned out to be into Instagram under culinary underscore magic underscore of underscore the underscore Emirates. So the culinary magic of the Emirates and between each word is an underscore and um, you can find there as to if you wish to buy the book. I will be giving Emirati food shows. Uh, you will see my Facebook under Alexandra von Hahn. I'm going to text it in afterwards so you can all look into it if you so wish. And at this point, I would like to say thank you so much, Cynthia. This was awesome and a pleasure being on your program. And thank you for hosting it. Thank you so much. The name of the dish was Shirin Polo. My name is Alexandra von Hahn, and I'll see you next time.